This is episode one of a series of videos to show how I built my RC374 Honda race replica in 2018. I rode my Viper V10 to Castle Coombe to watch some classic racing and bumped into Guy Martin and he invited me into his trackside enclosure where he was riding an RC174 300cc Honda 6 replica and I was amazed by the bike. We had a good old natter and he basically said to me, why don't you make your own? I did a quick bit of research online and to me the best engine to use was the Yamaha FZR 250RR engine because of its symmetrical design which lends itself perfectly for cutting up. A quick phone call to Pete at DK Motorcycles and I had two engines on the way. As soon as they arrived I stripped them both down into their component parts. And here you can see a bare set of crankcases. So I've got to cut just there and cut just there and weld those two bits onto the other set of crankcases to make my six cylinder. A quick visual check at the main bearing journals confirmed that they were symmetrical about the centre, which makes it much easier when you're making a wider engine. So there we go, the crankcases are all ready for cutting. I decided to work on the cylinder heads first. So one cylinder head, I cut off each cylinder off the outside, and then the other cylinder head, I cut it in half in the centre, so I can make a straight six. With this engine, I had water jackets to contend with, oilways and compression losses, all in the cylinder head modification. And here's one end of the cylinder head cut off, ready for machining. And here's one of the leftover end bits of barrel that I cut off that weren't required for the engine, to show you how much wider the engine would be if I line it up with the studs. And here's the finished barrel, resting on the standard crankcases and the join was just there on both sides. In this picture you can see the barrels resting onto the bottom crankcases with the additional parts not welded yet and the joins are staggered so it's cut between the end cylinder on the crankcase but the second cylinder in on the barrel and then back to the end cylinder on the cylinder head to make sure you've got a stepped joint. With the cylinder head parts machined, they rest down onto the barrels nicely and you can see the join here across the journals. When I was making the cylinder head and barrels and crankcases for, this, for the RC374, I, sadly I didn't take many photographs, but if you look at my Z1 Super 6 build videos, it's exactly the same process. Because this engine has a water-cooled cylinder head, I had to block up some of the internal galleries to treat it as three separate heads. Although they'll be welded together as one, the water jackets will be three separate water jackets. So I cut out pieces of metal, dropped them into gallery holes and welded them up. The centre hole is the water drain for the spark plugs. With the cylinder head welded back together and lapped flat on my lapping table, I was really pleased how it turned out. It looked just perfect. You could only just see where the welds were on either side. With the head and barrels welded, I bolted them onto the crankcases, modified the water distribution pipe and fitted the cam caps. These needed minor work to make them into four from three. The cam caps also have raised bosses that hold screws for the cam cover. And to make them into four bearing cam caps, I just cut one off and welded it on the end like this. While the cylinder head and barrel were still bolted onto the crankcases, I welded on the two additional end sections, and then using my coarse file, filed down the welds and finished off with some memory paper. The next thing I had to do was make the cam cover. So I cut two in half and mitered them together until they fitted just perfect. The cam covers are really light and on close examination I could see they're made of magnesium. Now this could cause me problems welding. I've never welded magnesium before. I remember reading somewhere that it's important that the filler material is the same material as the actual casting you're welding. So I thought I'd cut a piece off, a spare piece of casting. And also it's pyrophoric so you have to be very careful for fire. This is what happens if you heat it up with a blowtorch. As I walk past the kitchen, I notice that Tracy's not cooking today, but there's one cupcake left. So I pinch it without her noticing and go back out in the garden. It was so nice. So 
So here's a bit of magnesium cam cover. I'll just rest it on this piece of metal while I warm it up. Once the metal starts to burn, it's virtually impossible to put out and you must never put water on it because it actually splits the water into oxygen and hydrogen and causes it to explode even further. So you let it cool down and eventually it does go out. But even when you tap it afterwards, it'll reignite if you're not careful. So it's best just to leave it for ages. Hello? Oh, what, you're out on a walk and there's smoke coming over my fence? No, it's not one of my two strokes. I just had a bit of a magnesium fire, but it's all out now. Okay, bye Greta, bye. I'd never welded magnesium before, so I thought I'd have a practice first on a bit of scrap material. So first of all, I cut a thin slither of material from the center to use as a filler wire. This method ensures that the filler wire is exactly the same grade as the parent metal to give you the best weld. The first thing I notice when cutting magnesium with a hacksaw is that you need a really sharp new blade, otherwise it just skids over the surface. And that should do just perfect for welding. I think I'd left a bit of paint near the weld, which caused all the smoke, but the weld itself was okay. And I gave it a quick file up and it looked great. So this would be just perfect for doing the cam covers. And here's the cam cover, all finished with a coat of silver paint. I decided to start checking over the internal parts and cleaning up the bits I could be using. All the pistons were in great condition, so I picked the six best ones and put them aside. I managed to find five good liners, but the rest were damaged where someone had left the spark plugs out and water had got in, so I needed to look for a new liner. All 24 valves cleaned up perfect, like they'd never been used. So I was well pleased with that. And here's the buckets and the valves and the springs. They're so small in the palm of my hand. I then ground in all the valves and marked them so they went back in the same place when I did the final assembly. With the cylinder head, barrels and crankcases basically finished, it was time to think about the camshafts. I cut the camshafts up with my angle grinder so I could rephase the lobes at 120 degrees. Each part of the camshaft was bored on my lathe to accept a gudgeon pin from an old piston. Then I could press the camshafts together really tight, twist them to the required angle, and then spot weld them with my TIG welder. And here you can see where I've bored out the central part of the camshaft, ready to push over the gudgeon pin, nice and tight in my press. And here's all the individual parts of each camshaft laying in the cylinder head, ready to be pressed together and aligned. And this picture shows the finished camshafts with the cam caps, all ready to go into the assembled cylinder head. I placed the camshafts into the bare cylinder head, put on the cam caps, did up the screws, and it all rotated great. I was well pleased with that. The next job I had to do was to make a new one-piece cylinder head gasket and I used half millimetre thick copper and I could use my Swiss Army knife scissors to cut around the tight corners. They were just perfect. The next thing I did was make a new cylinder liner to replace the rusty one from a hollow Meonite casting. These were available online for making cylinder liners. This was the smallest one they did because they basically cater for car engines, but it was just right for my job. So I put it in the lathe and started machining. I've actually got enough material to make two, which is good. I've still got the lump of meonite. I might use it one day, but for now it just sits in my cupboard. 
With a new cylinder liner pressed back into the barrel, I put it on my mini bore boring machine and bored it out to the correct size to fit the piston. The next thing I wanted to do was to convert the wet clutch to a dry clutch so it looks right on the bike and has the right sound. And here's my original sketch showing the outer drum, the inner drum, the input shaft, the drive gear, the new cover plate, the old cover plate, the outer seal and the inner seal. So the first part I made was the outer clutch drum spacer from a piece of stainless steel that I had to chain drill out first before I could put it on my lathe. And here it is finished machined, ready to drill the mounting holes. And this photo shows the completed outer basket extension in the centre and the inner basket extension on the right hand side. A new cover plate was made from 10mm thick aluminium. This fits between the clutch and the engine. And here it is machined to take the outer seal. I made a new oil filler spout and welded it above the clutch. Here's the inner clutch basket spacer showing the new spline. I broached this using an old gearbox shaft. I then had to machine the old clutch basket to remove the spline from the centre and face off the back surface so I could bolt on the new clutch extension spacer. I put the clutch in a basket in my lathe, gripping it tight in a three-jaw chuck, then tapped it true and checked it with my DTI. After a couple of taps, it's running really good, better than half a thou. So I set up my boring bar and start facing off the back surface and then bore out the hole in the centre to remove the old spline. And there we go. I'm well pleased with that. That's just the job. With the machining on the clutch hub finished, I put on the extension hub, spot through and drill the holes and bolt it in place. And it's just perfect. And here's all the modified parts and the new parts of my dry clutch conversion, ready to trial fit on the engine. And here's the new dry clutch, bolted up to the engine for the first time. I then made a stainless steel tow guard to go around the rear of the clutch. The next thing I wanted to do was check that the camshaft dry system still worked with a modified engine. So I made up a temporary dummy crankshaft, which is a straight piece of bar with a cog in the center, put on the chain and all the cam chain tensioning mechanisms, set it all up and spun it up with my electric drill. I hope you enjoyed the video and don't forget to subscribe because next time I'm going to be making the crankshaft components for the six cylinder roller bearing crankshaft and then putting it together.